a different world with its own rules. We hope there'll be no problems, no trouble. Zero tolerance. There are murderers incarcerated here and similar high profile cases. All this behind bars. Gangs. Violence. Drugs. Harassment. A daily struggle for survival in the toughest prisons in the world. Munda Luyong City in the greater Manila area. Rich and poor live next to each other here. In the slums, people struggle to survive. Often, the last resort is prostitution, drugs, or other illegal activities. As is the case all over the world, if you get caught, you end up behind bars. The women in the Philippines usually end up here, in the Correctional Institution for Women, the largest and oldest women's prison in the Philippines. The correction officers who work here risk their lives every day to keep the prisoners inside. Of course, as a correctional officer, sometimes we're also afraid. But we fight this feeling because we need to be brave and not show the PDL that we're afraid of them. It is a must that we have no fear in our eyes. That is even more important during the day because then the prisoners are not locked up. A daily struggle to keep control. Look at this. This hammer can be used to smash someone's head during a brawl. If something gets out of control inside the prison, the last people who can prevent an escape are the correction officers out on the wall who are ready for any serious situation. If they really do not listen and persist, if they still don't cooperate, we will fire a shot. Every day the same applies. Permanent around-the-clock vigilance and the largest women's prison in the Philippines. Eight a.m. in front of the so-called CIW. Work begins for the day shift as it does for Officer Fiola. She and her colleagues work a three-shift system. Before they begin, she and her colleagues first pause for prayer. There are only 20 guards per shift. Always remember, before the handover, look at your surroundings so we will not encounter any problems. Always be careful while on duty, that's all. Constant vigilance is top priority. For every 20 correction officers per shift, there are around 3,300 PDLs, persons deprived of liberty. Yet, the prison is only designed to hold just 1,000. There is also fear, but I try to be courageous. 
Before I go inside, I pray first that nothing will happen until our shift ends. Officer Fiola's duty area is the maximum security wing. This is where the prisoner's most dangerous PDLs are located. For the guards too, the first thing to do is a security check. This is so absolutely nothing unauthorized gets in. A proper handover takes place during shift changes. She handed all the keys over to me, 18 keys in all, and the total number of all PDLs is 1,484, the total population of all buildings. Extremely overcrowded. As if the sheer number of PDLs wasn't intimidating enough, one fact makes entering the prison even more dangerous for correction officers. They carry no weapons. Before we start working here, we also undergo martial arts training. We learn self-defense against the PDLs. That's our only defense weapon here, since we're not allowed to bring arms and ammunition inside. And this, despite the fact that here, in the maximum security wing, murderers, gang members, and drug addicts, among others, move freely. The entire prison consists of a total of three security camps. In the minimum security camp are light offenders. In the medium security camp are those who have committed more serious crimes. And then there is the maximum security camp for the most notorious criminals. And there is another thing that makes it tough for the correction officers in this prison. Only women are allowed in the heart of the largest women's prison in the Philippines. And that means only female officers too, just four on this wing, together with just under 1,500 PDLs. Keeping everybody under constant control is literally impossible. The only way to verify that there isn't a single prisoner missing is counting heads over and over again, a total of five times a day. The guards are tense. The chance that one will somehow manage to escape from the overcrowded prison is, after all, ever-present. And that the numbers do not match at the time of a shift change is also a major concern. When the numbers don't add up, that's when we usually start to get a bit nervous, since that's when we consider a PDL missing. So what we do is a recount, and we look for the missing PDL. Of course, we feel nervous and scared as well, because these PDLs are our liability, our responsibility. This time, the numbers match. No one is missing. But how will it be at the next head count? Nobody knows. 
because in the maximum security wing of the CIW, the Correctional Institution for Women, all prisoners move around during the day almost completely freely. The prison grounds cover roughly 10,000 square meters. The area within the walls almost resembles its own city. Large and small shops are spread across the site. There are fruits, vegetables, meat, as well as things like fish, hygiene products, canned goods, and snacks. It's operated by the PDLs themselves. There's also a bakery that provides fresh baked goods daily. As long as the PDLs are working, they are busy. But that also means, for the most part, they are left to their own devices to do their jobs. And in some areas, they even handle dangerous objects, like scissors and knives. More freedom for PDLs means less control for correction officers, a permanent balancing act. Protection around the prison is vitally important. Especially because the Philippine women's prison borders directly on a residential area separated only by a wall. That's where male correction officers stand guard. When it comes to standing guard, especially since we have more than 3,000 PDLs imprisoned here, it is very hard to be an officer. Because from time to time, while you're watching them, some attempt to escape, and it is my responsibility. So it isn't that easy to stand guard as an operations officer. We follow procedures, protocols. We give warnings, for example. If they don't listen and persist, and if they ignore our warnings, we will fire a shot. Unlike their female counterparts in the prison, the men here do carry weapons. Of course, it's part of our job. We carry firearms. We consider the PDLs criminals. They have criminal minds. They can always fight if they want to. There is a protocol we are following. The female correction officers are assigned to watch the female PDLs. And it's a good thing that the guards inside are female to avoid sexual abuse, especially because we are men. So the men are separated and stand guard outside. On the wall, it is largely safe for the guards. while the female colleagues inside perform their duties without weapons. Among other things, their jobs include hourly patrols. Each correction officer looks after her own area. Their only equipment, whistles and walkie-talkies. Therefore, in order to keep all the occupants under control, they have allies among the PDLs themselves. One selected prisoner at a time controls a dorm. Their designation, dorm in charge. Carla Benedito is one of them. 
On the one hand, she was chosen to be cell boss by her fellow prisoners. On the other, she has to make sure that everyone follows the rules. It's a delicate balancing act. During the day, she can only guess who is where. The area is vast. Yes, of course, there are also restricted areas. This is what we use to look for our fellow PDLs. For example, after the head count, sometimes there's someone missing. So I use this locator chart to find out where my fellow PDLs or doormates might be, if they are in the inner court or if they're going to another area. This way we know where they are and there is no need to look for one another. A system mostly based on trust. With few guards and thousands of female prisoners imprisoned for a wide variety of crimes. Ninety-eight of them live in this dorm alone all the more important that strict rules prevail. We have cleaners every day who maintain and clean the dormitory. It's a rotation from bed to bed. This is the assigned area this week. The cleaners have this assignment for a week. Hygiene is particularly important. Everyone has to share a bathroom that is not designed for the sheer mass of people. This is the toilet for we, which are This is the toilet for our dormitory. There are 98 of us. Three bowls. We use three bowls. Usually in the morning, that's when you quickly have to do your business, when you get up from bed, because then everybody needs to go. It's all about getting used to it. There is no privacy. All the more reason to leave the toilets clean. For this, they have to be flushed by hand, which leads to another problem. During the day, the water is turned off for several hours. That means enough of it needs to be stored to last for hours. Not only for the toilets, but also for everything else, such as drinking water. It's tough for those who do not think about it in time, and that with peak temperatures reaching 35 degrees Celsius. Another basic need, food. Meals are served in the prison three times a day. Control over the kitchen is also part of the job of the few correction officers. It's their dish for today, for lunch. We always need to know what food is served to them. That's why it is all documented in a logbook. The kitchen is one of the most dangerous places in the prison for both sides. Because the PDLs here have access to knives, among other things. They are used to cut primarily vegetables. There's also rice and fried food, especially fish. But it's not just the normal kitchen area that correction officers monitor on their rounds. They also keep a keen eye on the outdoor kitchen. If you have money as a prisoner, you can buy your own food and cook it yourself. But that also means gas stoves and fires in the hands of offenders. Thus, PDLs have more potential weapons at hand than the guards. Those who have no money 
only get what is provided by the prison. This can quickly lead to envy and frustration, and that could become a problem in the overcrowded dorms. The dorm in charge has to keep a permanent eye on such problems. I have the top position. I'm the leader. All the officers come to me to complain, so I cannot be the one to make complaints. So if there are problems, I will have to do something about it. I am like the head of the household. I'm the one at the top of the chart. So if anything goes wrong, it's my responsibility. It's my, it's my responsibility. We are, we are six. We have, we have dorm in charge, dorm in house, secretary, treasurer, auditor, and then bed placement. So we are six officers. In every dormitory, there are six officers. Next to me is bed. In the prison hierarchy, under me is dorm and house. So if a problem arises, they go to the dorm and house. And then she comes to me. I am then left to settle everything. It will be my decision. It is left to my discretion what to do with the situation. With the situation. The dorm in charge even has the right to punish other PDLs. If, for example, there's someone who wouldn't follow the rules and regulations, I would talk to them and ask them, why don't you want to follow the rules? Sometimes there really are stubborn people, so we will sanction them. For example, giving them extra work to do, like disposing of the garbage cleaning the toilets, or in the worst case, there is dorm arrest. Then you are not allowed to go outside. You have to stay in the dorm. If, for example, they continue to be stubborn, we will go to the keeper. We will go to the keeper. If all measures by the dorm in charge fail, they then turn to the keepers the correction officers in the prison. It's a system that can be found at several prisons in the Philippines. Whether with women or men, guards in other prisons also use the help of prisoners to keep troubling situations under control. also to make sure that no one escapes. The guards try to keep as much distance from the prisoners as possible. The guards do not intervene because they are not authorized to go in there unless we have an ongoing operation inside. But if there is no operation, it's just me and the team leader on duty who have the right to go in there. We forbid all the guards here from going in there for as long as we have no operation inside. One of the few reasons for the guards to enter the interior of the walls is to count the prisoners. Otherwise, the rule is minimal contact. In the CIW, the Correctional Institution for Women in the Greater Manila Area. Usually during the day, there are only female correction officers on the inside among the freewheeling PDLs. They carry no weapons. It's a confusing terrain with numerous winding alleys. There are also so-called high-value PDLs among the prisoners. These include female murderers and gang members of the Mauta clan, which has a notorious reputation in the Philippines. 
Of course, as a correctional officer, sometimes we're also afraid. But we fight this feeling because we need to be brave and not show the PDL that we are afraid of them. It is a must that we have no fear in our eyes. A struggle that begins anew every day. A couple of guards with thousands of prisoners. So, the rules are strict. Please fix your face masks, wear them properly. High value PDLs are housed with the other detainees. Even though the doors are all open, a higher level of security applies to them because of their crimes. The cases here are high profile, mostly members of the Mautes. Usually the cases here are controversial. There are murderers, usually high profile cases. That's why the security level in this storm is different. The places they can go are restricted. They are limited to these surroundings. They cannot approach us near the gate. They cannot enter there. But it is allowed for other dorms, as long as they ask permission from their DIC. Even in the maximum security wing, the guards have to rely on the prisoners with special privileges under their command, the DICs, to make sure everyone follows the rules. It is our protocol that firearms are not allowed in here. It is for our security, because they can snatch things away from us and use the firearms to harm us. And of course, we are outnumbered. We really cannot keep an eye on them all. So, for our security, we are not allowed to bring in firearms. They can take them away from us and also use them against the other PDLs. That's why it would be scary to bring firearms with us here. Only a few cases are more isolated, with the aim to protect the other prisoners. We call this storm the therapeutic community. This is where the drug users undergo behavior modification under the reformation program. Their cases are drug related. So sometimes their mental states have been altered. They need to be reformed first before they can be transferred and can join the other PDLs. Only at night are these prisoners locked up in their separate dorms. The rest of the time, they are allowed to move around on the prison grounds, just as freely as the other PDLs. But with the high number of prisoners, it is far too cramped. The dorms of the largest women's prison in the Philippines are not enough. They are massively overcrowded. Old washrooms have been converted into sleeping quarters. And there are not enough beds. Those who don't get one sleep on the floor. Only the DICs, dorms in charge, and the old and sick are privileged. They are the first to get their own bed. 
The most critical period in the Correctional Institution for Women begins in the evening. This is when all PDLs are locked up. This is the last head count of the day. It's also one of the few moments when male correction officers are allowed inside the prison walls. Nighttime is when the danger for escape attempts and assaults is the highest. At night, when the surroundings are dark, it is possible that some of the prisoners might try to hide from us, to uh, hide in dark places, difficult to see areas. The fear is still there because there are all sorts of people here, people from different places who have different habits and ways. Their cases are all different. We are still not at ease even though they talk to us nicely. You don't know what's on their minds. As of now, the PDLs are on their own all night. Locked up until the night shift opens the cells in the morning. And during the night without incident always allows the correction officer to breathe a sigh of relief. The night shift is a bit more difficult, since at night they are all locked up already, and we no longer know what could happen. In case of an earthquake or natural calamities, it is a bit difficult to unlock the padlocks. We would need to let them all out. During the night shift, it's also hard if there are any commotions inside especially if there are only one or two officers on duty that night. It's also a little bit hard during the night shift in the sense that we do not see everything, especially those who are old and the sick. Sometimes they suffer heart attacks, especially because of our weather nowadays. It's already too hot during the summertime. Every single morning is a relief for all. Once it is clear, all PDLs leave their cells unharmed. If I were the one inside, I would feel sad because it is so cramped and so hot inside. And there is a lack of bed bunks. Some sleep on the floor. When I open the gate, I feel happy because the PDLs get to go out. On the other hand, a new day is now also beginning for the understaffed guards, among murderers, gang members, drug addicts, and other criminals.
all the more reason to conduct regular searches for dangerous objects. Another situation where male guards are allowed inside the dorms. Our custodian is correction officer to De La Cruz. If we catch anything illegal, he will record it. Then, after the inspection, we will write up a report. Camacho, you are in charge of the report, okay? Do we understand that, comrade? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dismissed. Once or twice a month, the guards conduct unannounced searches of the dorms. Private belongings of the PDLs are kept to a minimum. Nevertheless, controlling the overcrowded dormitories is a challenge. To conduct the searches, PDLs are required to leave their dorm. Before that, everyone is carefully searched so that no prohibited items are smuggled out past the guards. the actual search begins. Everything is taken apart. Every box and every bottle is checked. We check what's inside, if it is forbidden or not. But this is just water. We check to see if there is liquor. In fact, any alcohol that's more than 70%, that is not allowed. But that's not all. I will check if there is any contraband that is being hidden. I'm also looking for dangerous things like sharp objects or knives. And the correction officers find what they are looking for. This is a sharp object. Sharp object, And this hammer can be used to smash someone's head during a brawl. So we need to confiscate the screwdriver and hammer. She is our handyman. She does maintenance work here. She repairs things that get broken here. The problem is that some of the prisoners are actually allowed to have such items for maintenance purposes. But at the same time, in a room full of female criminals, they can become potentially lethal weapons. She will be investigated. Why does she have this? What will she do with it? What will she use it for? If it can be proven that she has no bad intentions, she will not be given any punishment or dorm arrest. They are authorized to use it in the dorm for their own maintenance. So they're allowed to have it. But at night, it is taken away by the DIC and locked up. So they can't hurt others.
The use of tools, like everything here, is a delicate balancing act for the wardens. Prisoners are supposed to maintain their surroundings themselves as best they can. They are allowed to use tools, which are potentially dangerous items. But they can be another source of trouble in the Philippines' largest women's prison. No one has even a second of privacy here, in the worst case, for the rest of their life. We could not have a long time here, you see. Even if you sit on your own bed, there are still people around you. So we don't have, so we have to, to coexist. For some people, it's very hard because they, they seek privacy, but you have to go along with it. There are people who, they don't like the noise. They, we cannot do anything about it. We are in one dormitory, so we have to, to bear with each other's shortcomings and everything. That makes the job of the dorms in charge even more important. They are trying to keep everything under control. This is my bed, and this is where I bring some PDLs to sit if we, something goes wrong. We sit and talk here. I sit in my bed, and then I have you know, my dorm mates. If something goes wrong, we talk about it, we settle about it. They are sometimes shouting much, but there's no, what you call this, physical, uh, no, there's no such thing as like that. Only sometimes, you know, when, when you're angry that the voice is, you know, get, getting louder. And, but then, at the end of the day, we settle it. If an issue escalates, it would likely be devastating for the majority of PDLs. Officially, serious incidents at the CIW the Correctional Institution for Women never happened. This could be because the punishment for serious offenses is the isolation cell. Whoever ends up there is forced to eke out an existence without an exit and without distractions, but with plenty of time to think. In the worst case, for up to one whole month. Well, it depends on their violation, and it also depends on the investigation section. While they're here, their cases are still under investigation. When there is no reason to be here or no truth to the accusation, then they are free to go. During this time, they are forced to live essentially without anything. There are no beds, not even fans, despite peak temperatures reaching up to 35 degrees Celsius. They don't do it again because they learn their lesson when they get here. I don't think there is anyone who keeps coming back here. They can only eat food rationed to them, nothing else. They cannot buy food outside. That's it. And their water, too. There's no talking with the others. That's all they get. The guards don't have to worry about the PDLs here. But there are plenty of others who could pose a potential threat to the guards or to other prisoners. And they all have one thing in common. They live a life without freedom for years. Crammed together in a small space, without any privacy. And yet, they are very much alone. First 
The first time I came here to work for the Correctional Institution for Women, I felt pity for them. And at the same time, I felt sad because there are so many locked up in here at CIW. At first, I was also a little scared because of those who are here. It is just really sad because you will feel for the PDLs, especially those far from home. They cannot be with their families. They just have themselves and only see the corners of the prison. The correction officers in the largest and oldest women's prison in the Philippines carry huge responsibility every day. Initially designed for 1,000 PDLs, today there are three times that many here. But everyone tries to make the best of it. It's not really that crowded, but of course sometimes we get a lot of new arrivals. So sometimes there's not enough space, but somehow we make it work. Every additional prisoner equates to greater danger for everyone. But there is hope, both for the guards and for the PDLs. We believe that the so-called modernization law will be implemented. The day will come when this prison will be made better. Improvements will happen. There will be more manpower. And the building facilities will be restored to make the work here lighter and better. At least things appear to be happening, which point to a better future. But the PDLs incarcerated here have other things on their mind. First and foremost, they are thinking about their future. Hopefully, I wish and I pray that I could also be free. I want to be with my family, to especially with my daughter. I want to, you know, for how many years, 16 years in prison, I want, to, you know, they are already working and uh, she's already working. We could, you know, band together, whatever years left with me, I could stay with them. Because we don't know what tomorrow brings in. Tomorrow, like every day, the same thing applies at the Correctional Institution for Women in Mandaluyong City. Hang in there, keep cool, and do your best to get through the next day.